hi guys and welcome back to my channel welcome to another look at what's for dinner some things we've been eating around here lately i hope you find some inspiration maybe a new recipe that you'd like to try or add to your meal plan my very favorite one we're going to start off with first and that was a goulash so so good you definitely want to make this one got a lot of other easy and quick meals too hopefully you'll find something that looks good to you all right let's get into this week's video I mentioned earlier in my intro about this goulash and that's what I'm starting this video off with. This was so delicious. Goulash is not something that I typically make, but I'm so glad I recorded this so I could have this to see exactly how I made this um, because the flavors were just so good. So here we've got two pounds of ground beef and the onion, that's about a cup or so. I've got that all cooking together and then I'm gonna get that drained off and add in about three teaspoons uh, freshly minced garlic. I don't think you can go wrong with garlic, so you can add garlic to your heart's content, but that's about what I added in here. It did also call for green pepper, which I didn't have, so I left that out. And then I have some fresh garden tomatoes um, here to use, and I knew that that would be my tomato portion of this recipe, so I just get these all diced up here and added into my kettle here for this goulash now the original recipe that i found i just looked until i found one that suited what i wanted to make uh, or very close i'll have that linked below so you can follow that one if you would like to Right, now I'm going to add in my Worcester sauce, my Italian seasoning, and some dry beef base. Instead of making that into beef broth, I'm just going to use like a heaping tablespoon of the dry beef base because I am using a pretty large container of V8 juice. And so I have more liquid than I need because of that. So I decided to just use the beef broth seasoning and not water mixed with it for the liquid. So I needed to use up this V8. It's actually the spicy V8, but it did not make the soup spicy in any way. Um, but that was kind of the idea behind the goulash as well because I wanted to use up this V8 juice that I had. So after I get these things stirred in here, you can see how thick this looks and it's really, really smelling good at this point. Now I'm going to add in my V8 juice. I'm going to give this a stir before adding in the pasta and I'm loving using this Didolini pasta. It calls for elbows but I did not have it and actually I think I preferred it just like this. So I've already purchased another box of the same pasta to use again because it was just right. Now in case you were wondering why I'm using a spoon that seems too small to be stirring up a pot of goulash because I have had a comment before about why do I use a certain utensil and maybe it wasn't the right one per se. I'm using this spoon because I'm just using this spoon. No reason. Um, I have bigger ones I could be using, but I'm just using this one right now. Now, it's time to add in my cheeses. And again, just look at the recipe for exactly what they called for. But again, I'm using what I had on hand which is some of the shredded cheese. And then I had a few slices of this aged sharp white cheddar cheese I'm putting in there as well. Again, um, a few changes I made. It called for seasoning salt. I didn't add that. I did not add a bay leaf to this as, as well, but it's very versatile. You can kind of use what you have on hand. 
Honestly, I would make this the exact same way again. It was so, so good. So you can see here it's thickened up and then this cheese just gets it even thicker still. The flavors were the best thing about this. I think the V8 made a really good flavor. The Worcestershire sauce with it, the cheese, just all of it combined together to make such a delicious goulash. So if you're looking for something different along the lines of like a soup or a chili and you want something just a little bit different, give this one a try. This steam kind of fogged up my lens there, so I apologize for that, but look how good this looks. Just served it with a little bit of cheese on top and it was so hearty and delicious. We had leftovers for the next day, which always is a win. Definitely give this one a try. I don't think you would be disappointed. All right, look at these delicious brats, Italian sausages, um, sweet Italian, hot Italian. Look how good those look. I'm going to show you now how I put together that dinner. So I ended up having three different types of sausages, brats, sweet Italians, and hot Italians. And I wanted to keep those separated in my crock pot that's kind of the long 9 by 13 size. So you can see here on the bottom, I've already filled it with lots of green peppers and onions all slivered up and that's in the bottom of my sprayed crock pot. And so I decided maybe by using a couple little strips of foil, that would help me to kind of keep these separated because I didn't want to have the hot ones, um, you know, along with the sweet ones because this was family night and I didn't want the little boys to maybe end up with a hot sausage. I wanted everyone to get to choose what sausage they wanted. So this did help. So I just went alphabetical order. So the far end there are the brats. Then in the middle, I put the hot sausages and on the end, I put the sweet sausages. And so that worked out pretty well. Just kind of gave me a visual there of what um, was in the pan that way I could keep them all straight so I just got these all in my crock pot and put on the lid you cannot get much easier than this and these just cooked away all afternoon the side I decided to go with some pasta salad so I'm using this corkscrew pasta I'm gonna get that boiled all up and I've really been enjoying through the summer I have really liked having artichokes in my pasta salad almost every time that I've made it so I added those to the usual suspects tomato onion carrot just whatever you have in your fridge that's good for a pasta salad throw it in there some broccoli you can see so got my pasta cooked, drained, and cooled. I'm going to add that in here. And then again, I am always one who likes to use things that I have or finish up things that I have. And so I have a couple different kinds of dressing that I knew that would be great in this. So that's what I used. All high fives for miles in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird Alright, so for my bottom of the jar dressings that I used, it was a Greek, some honey mustard, some ranch. Now I'm going in with Italian seasoning. I'm also going to use a little bit of seasoning salt, a little bit of pepper, um, garlic powder, and then I ended up putting the rest of the jar of the marinated artichokes, uh, artichoke hearts in there, and I used a little bit of that olive oil that that was in and I just got this all mixed around and this was absolutely delicious. I love the versatility of a pasta salad. It's of course the same in a sense but it can always be a little bit different based on what dressings you use, what seasonings you use, what veggies you have on hand but always delicious.
All right, and now it's time for all of the bun and cheese prep. So I just am using a cookie sheet here and I ended up bumping up to the next size. So I'd have plenty of room for these. So I'm just going through and putting in a slice of provolone cheese in all of these hoagie rolls so I can put in the veggies and the sausages. I also decided about the ha last half hour of cook time, I was gonna go ahead and put in some marinara on top of these sausages. I was just back and forth while I was doing the marinara, marinara or not, but I decided that I would. So that's already on the sausages and is all warmed through. And so I'm just gonna go through. And like I said here, I'm gonna bump up to the next size cookie sheet. I thought I could fit this one. This is a bigger one that I have and thought I could fit them all on there, but I needed my really, really big one um, just so I could have a little more room. But I'm just going to go through and get all of these buns stuffed with the sausages, the peppers, and the onions. Walk up the river by my son Feet step over splinters of the moon Like I said, this was family night and a good time was had by all. Our tummies were full and we enjoyed our fellowship and catching up with each other as we always do. Hello everyone. Tonight's dinner is going to be a real easy one and a quick one. James wanted some of this beef brisket. He made this at the beginning of September and we had about a quart size bag left over that he put in the freezer. And so all I had to do is pull this out, or actually he did. And so I just put it in the skillet, about half of the bag. And I sliced up a half of an onion. And he, I think he's going to eat his plain um, without any bread. I have some mac and cheese that I made from homemade last night. So he may have that along with it, I'm not sure. And then I'm going to have mine on a bun. I'll show you here. I've got some of these deli rolls. They're kind of like the hoagie style. I'm going to put mine on this with um, provolone cheese and some of the onions. I may toast this up quick in the air fryer first, but that's what I'm going to do with mine. And so, yeah, that's going to be just a super, super tasty dinner, but a super quick one as well because the brisket's already made and just in the freezer. So. Those freezer meals come in handy. All right, my bread is out of the air fryer. It's all toasted up. And on goes all of this yummy, cheesy, oozy goodness with the brisket, the onions, the provolone, just perfect. So I'm serving this tonight on my fine china, and I'm going in with a little bit of um, open pit. It's got that tangy, spicy flavor that I really enjoy. I've got some sweet pickles, which I think are so good with barbecue and this crispy crunchy bun oh my goodness this is falling apart messy yumminess and then i remembered to put on some horseradish cream sauce which i had as well this tasted like something you would get in a restaurant it was so delicious i just put a little bit of mac and cheese along with it and what a yummy dinner quick yummy dinner this was all right and this particular dinner or meal rather was a lunch James had hired uh, some friends of ours, some young whippersnappers, to come help us do some work out on our property. So I made this huge batch of uh, cheesy potato soup and these wraps. They are ham, turkey, salami, cheese, lettuce, some cream cheese. That was the um, green onion flavor, I think it was. And just some croutons to go with the soup, some apple straws, chips, apples with caramel. This is a really yummy lunch to feed these um, hard, hard workers that really, really helped us get so much done in preparation for our big fall party, which I'll have a video of that 
um, coming really soon. We had that a couple weekends ago and it was just so much fun. So this was a lunch that we had um, that day with the young people that were here working with us, getting some stuff done. Then James left for his big hiking trip in Minnesota and I was on my own for several days. And so I did a lot of just this and that food, but I did make myself a couple of things to eat during that time period. And one of them was this here. So I cooked up some teriyaki noodles. They're just the kind of like ramen, but it comes in its own dish. So I cooked that up and I used a little bit of the Trader Joe's um, orange chicken and that was the orange chicken sauce that you saw me put in there instead of the sauce that came with the doodles I used the orange chicken sauce and put in some steamed broccoli and just kind of sauteed this all together in the skillet it was so absolutely delicious I just put some red pepper flakes on the top and it just it just always tastes like takeout um, at home and you just can't you can't get much easier than that. So that was one meal that I made my, for myself while James was gone on his big hiking trip in Minnesota. And then for the next meal that I made, I used these Parmesan herb encrusted chicken tenders from Aldi. Now I've talked about these before and people really rave about the red bag chicken and that's good. But in my opinion, this is even better. The chicken tastes, it's just so, so good. It's a really tender, it's moist. It's so good. I do it in the air fryer and um, it, you can use it all kinds of ways, but I'm going to show you how I used it today. I pulled out two of the great value breadsticks. That's also going to go in the air fryer when my chicken is close to being done. These don't take any time in the air fryer. I'm going to boil myself up a little bit of angel hair pasta. This is also from Aldi. And I'm going to use this ready-made creamy Alfredo by Classico. This is probably my favorite brand if you're going to use a jar Alfredo. And then I'll probably just put some Parmesan cheese and pepper and maybe a little bit more garlic in there to kind of uh, jazz it up a bit. And I am making myself some dinner with these things. My husband's been gone on an extreme. Uh, it's called XCC Extreme Character Challenge, a big, big hike in Minnesota. And I have not been cooking for myself. I've been eating just easy, quick things. Like today for lunch, I had a bagel. So, <laughs> I am going to pull this together, make myself something yummy, and I'll show you when it's all done. Okay, the chicken is out of the air fryer now, and I just want to show you how tender and juicy this chicken is out of the air fryer. You can just see the juice in the chicken, and it is always so delicious every time. So, I'm basically just going to chunk this up, and I'm going to make myself some basically chicken Alfredo using the angel hair pasta. Look at that. Yes, so good. Um, just, it came together super quick and easy, but delicious. Tastes just as good as you could get somewhere out, and it just hit the spot. I'm putting a little bit of dry seasonings on there, a little bit of garlic powder, and getting it all fixed up here, and put my chicken in, having my breadstick, and this was delicious. All right, you guys, thank you again, as always, every time you stop by. If you enjoyed this What's for Dinner, can you give it a big thumbs up? And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. I would love to have you around here. If you click that red notification bell every time I'm in the kitchen, you can be in the kitchen with me, and we could just cook together. All right, you guys, I'll see you the next time. Good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Oh,